In this segment, I wanna make a couple of very easy but powerful improvements in the app. The first one is not so much an improvement but avoiding an issue in the app, which is if you rotate the screen. So you can see that whenever you rotate the screen in Android, the activity is destroyed and recreated. And we are not doing a great job with managing the space here. Our app isn't very smart around when the phone is wider than it is taller, the number of columns in the memory grid should be larger. But right now we're still assuming this portrait mode where we will always have more rows than we will have columns. And so we have two options. One is we could actually properly address this and that would require some logic inside of the memory board adapter and figuring out how much space to allocate in the width and height. The other option is to do the lazy thing, which is not allow the user to change the mode of these activities to be in landscape. And that's what we're gonna end up doing. So if we open up Android Manifest, we have two activities in our app, create activity and main activity. And we're going to update the screen orientation attribute to be portrait. And that's it, that's the only valid option. And by adding this line into the Android manifest file, even if the screen is rotated, even if the user rotates their phone, then Android won't actually go through the activity lifecycle. We're not going to be destroying the activity. And so we're still looking at the same portrait mode UI, even in landscape. The two line solution that we came up with here to lock the orientation and portrait is definitely the lazy solution, but I would argue that this is actually a reasonable trade-off to make. Our job as engineers is about efficiency. And so you have to make the decision about how much value are you delivering to users by implementing proper landscape mode in the app versus how much engineering time or developer time would that take? And can you use your time better elsewhere? You can definitely implement this if you wanna learn more, but the key takeaway here is thinking about what problem are you trying to solve? The second improvement I wanna make is I wanna add a little bit more festivity when the user wins the game. So right now, let me quickly see if I can win the game. So we just have this snack bar show up, you won, congratulations. I'd also like to have something a bit more festive. And in particular, I wanna have some confetti pop up. And this turns out to be really easy because we can use a library which does this for us. So if you go to your browser and just Google for Android confetti library, you'll come up with this GitHub repository. And this is the one that we're going to end up using. So I'll, I'll show you how to use it. But right now, all you need to do is copy over this line to add this into your build.gradle file, which is located in the app module. Tap on sync now so we can pull this library into our project. And now let's go into main activity and let's figure out where do we actually detect that we've won the game. So as soon as we flip over a card, that's the only time when we have the potential to win the game. And we have this snack bar that we show up right now. So right here is where I'd like to now show this confetti. And it turns out that we can do this with literally one line of code. I'm gonna invoke a static method in the library. I'll say common confetti import this and we're going to call this method raining confetti. The first parameter here is the container. That'll be the parent element on which the confetti should be falling. So we'll call CL root. And then the next parameter is the colors that you want the confetti to be. So I'll say int array of, and we're just going to pass in some colors that are already defined for us by the Android system. And you can kind of pick whatever you like. Here's the ones I picked yellow, green, and magenta. In order to actually launch the confetti, we call this method one shot. And that's it. So let's try it and see how it looks. Amazing. So you can see how this confetti is falling. And there's some like particle physics inside of the library, some math, so that we have some particles, some confetti, falling quickly, some falling slowly, and they also will drift side to side. So it's a really nice, simple way to make the app more fun. The next thing I'd like to do is update the color scheme of the app. And there's definitely no right answer here. You can be creative and pick whatever color you like. But what I recommend most people do is go to color.adobe.com. And this is a really nice way to pick out a color palette. You can kind of take this, drag it around, 
and figure out what color scheme you like. And if you don't like uh, this one, which by default is analogous, you can pick out one more, like monochromatic, triad, complementary, or whatever you want. And this is, gives you a nice working set of colors, which we can then use to update our Android app. We have a couple different colors, like a status bar color, this action bar color, and this background color of the linear layout. So those are the colors that I want to update. So let's open up the colors.xml file. I'm going to add three more colors here. First, we'll define green dark. Then we'll have one more called green darkest, and then a third one called green blue. And you can pick whatever colors you want for this, like we talked about. Here's what I picked for green dark. Green darkest is a darker shade of green dark. And then fi finally, green blue is a teal. And you can see a preview on the left-hand side. Now we have to make use of these newly defined colors. And we'll do that in themes.xml. We'll define color primary to be green dark. We'll define color primary variant to be green darkest. And notice on line 13, the status bar color is the color primary variant. And finally, in the secondary brand color category, we'll update both the color secondary and color secondary variant to be green blue. One more thing I'd like to call out, dark mode is all the rage these days. And so Android Studio actually has a separate file, themes.xml located inside of values-night. And so if the app or phone supports dark mode, then the colors inside of the values-night themes file will be read instead of the one that we defined. Just something to keep in mind if you're into that sort of thing. Let's try our app with these new colors. And if we've done our job correctly, we should no longer see this purple color at the top. We should instead be seeing the palette of green we picked out. So we have a green action bar, a darker green for the status bar, and at the bottom, the blue green. The final design improvement I'd like to make is to change the view of the memory card when it's face down, this green grid, because it just feels like our app is still under construction, and instead use some custom image for the default state. So you're welcome to pick whatever image you want for this. I want to open up the drawable directory, and the image that I found, I downloaded from the internet, is this picture of bamboo. So everyone loves pandas, therefore everyone should love bamboo. I'm going to drag this bamboo.png file into the drawable directory. Now let's reference this bamboo.png file inside of the memory board adapter, which is where we are setting the icon when a memory card is face down. So right here on line 65 is where we're setting the image resource if the card is face down. And we're going to set this equal to bamboo. So let's run the app and see what this looks like. Perfect. So you can see how now we have the bamboo background and we can play the game like normal. All right, okay, so let's try, just for good measure, let's play the whole game and go through the creation flow as well. So I'm gonna create a brand new game. I'm gonna call, I'm gonna have this be easy. And I'm gonna call this Corgi. And of course I can't save the game right now because I haven't added the images, but let's add our wonderful images of the Corgi. So I have four images of a Corgi here. And then let's tap on save. Perfect, it looks like it succeeded. Tap on okay. And now immediately we go back into the main activity and we can see that the title has changed to be Corgi and hopefully we should be able to play our game now. Yay, and you can see that, okay, we have this confetti following, we have the snack bar, we are recording the number of moves properly and we have this green text showing that we are 100% done and we found all the pairs. We can replay the game and this works because we're still holding on to the image URL list of all these Corgi images and we can play like normal. I can also choose a different size so I can pick like a medium sized board. And here notice that we are reverting the title back to my memory because this is now playing a default game with default icons. And we're also updating the text at the bottom. And so now we're playing with the default icons rather than the image URLs coming from a user. This looks really quite good. If you've also gotten this far in the game, I would love to hear from you. Drop a comment and let me know. I'll leave you with some extension ideas. The really nice thing about the memory game is that there are so many creative and fun ways to extend the functionality of what we've built together. So one idea I had was simply to add different board sizes. So right now we have three enums representing the different dimensions of the board, easy, medium, and hard. We could simply add a couple more enums for different configurations. Another idea I had was to introduce user authentication. And if you allow the user to log in, then you have this really 
nice ability to be able to see all of the custom games, all the custom boards that that logged in user has made. So you have this notion of history or profile for that user. And finally, there could be a lot of interesting work around discovery of other people's boards. So we could imagine there are hundreds of different custom boards created, and I want to see which ones are popular. And I could also enjoy playing other people's games. So if you do end up doing any of these, I'd love to see it. Drop a link to the published app or the GitHub repository, and we can celebrate your app. In the next segment, we're going to prepare our app for release. So I'll walk through a checklist with you about what I typically do before I publish any app on the Google Play Store. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate you building this with me. Hit that like button if you learned something, and also tap that subscribe button so you know when the next part comes out. See you soon.